Holy Ghost, Amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, after baptism, what is the soul's greatest event? Surely, it's First Holy Communion. And at life's end, what is the soul's great event? It's the last Holy Communion, Holy Viaticum. Between these two events, the First Communion and the last, the soul may, if it chooses, frequently receive the same repeat the same divine event and receive oceans of grace. In the innocence of childhood, amid the struggles of passionate youth, throughout the worldliness of mature years and the penance of old age, all through these varied and stormy experiences of life, Jesus is ever at hand if we choose to receive him in Holy Communion. My dearly beloved in Christ, the devout and frequent reception of our Lord in Holy Communion secures perseverance in God's friendship. It preserves us from falling back into sin by lessening the violence of our passions and temptations and by infusing new light into our soul by which we see the folly and the evil of sin. Holy Communion lessens our inclination to sin and helps us to practice good works. The sacrament preserves us from mortal sin by strengthening our souls for the spiritual combat and making them less sensitive to the sinful allurements of Satan in the world. Frequent communion puts the devil to flight and gives us a right to special actual graces. My dearly beloved in Christ, in the Holy Eucharist, we find courage, healing, and strength. Our Lord's presence within us deepens and strengthens our reconciliation with God. It provides refreshment for the weary pilgrim, medicine for the spiritually infirm, and rest for the labor. By the frequent and devout reception of Holy Communion, the virtues of Christ are reproduced in us. He lives in us, and we live in Him. What food and drink do for the body to a far greater degree, the Holy Eucharist does for our souls. My dear and beloved in Christ, in the Holy Eucharist, Almighty God manifests his goodness by giving us not only his grace, but all that he has and all that he is. He multiplies miracles and shrinks from no abasement in order to give himself to us. By a miraculous invention of his love, Jesus Christ remains substantially with us and is corporally united to us even while he is in heaven. My dearly beloved in Christ, venial sins do not and should not prevent us from going to Holy Communion. However, the purer our conscience, the more graces we receive from the sacrament. To receive more abundantly the graces of Holy Communion, we should strive to live our faith fervently and free ourselves from delivered venial sin. When Catholics frequently receive Holy Communion without any apparent improvement in their lives, as a result of it, there must be some obstacle to the graces of this sacrament. My dear the beloved in Christ, in the Holy Eucharist we find a preeminent proof of God's infinite love for us. Before Holy Communion, we should try to have an ardent desire to be united with Christ and approach Him with dispositions of humility, faith, hope, and love. The great test of the true love of God is our love of neighbor. This is the test laid down by our Lord. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you love one another. By this, you shall, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Charity toward our neighbor is an essential quality that God expects to find when he unites himself to us in a special manner in Holy Communion. My dearly beloved in Christ, as we come before the divine presence, we should feel as Moses did in the presence of the burning bush. Moses was amazed 
to discover this miraculous bush was not destroyed by the flames. As he drew near, God commanded him to stand still and take off his shoes, for the place was holy ground. At the voice of God, Moses fell on his feet. Again, as we become, come before the divine presence, we should feel as Moses did. In the presence of this miracle, we should feel in awe at the wonder of it. Not just First Holy Communion, but each time we receive our Lord in Holy Communion. That God comes down from heaven to dwell with our poor, unworthy souls. Come with love. What better word could be used to express the way we should re approach Holy Communion? The Blessed Sacrament is truly the sacrament of love, a miracle of divine love. For love of us, Jesus Christ instituted this sacrament. His desire to remain on earth with us is expressed in the words of Scripture. My delights are to be with the children of men. It's Christ's love for us that keeps him in the tabernacle, that makes him desire to unite himself with us in Holy Communion. Therefore, express your love in return. Come with a heart full of love to receive Jesus who suffered and died for you and who's blessed you in countless ways throughout your life, who's granted you so many favors and answered so many prayers, who has given you so much courage, consolation, and strength amid your suffering. So I'd just like to close with the story. This is a story about a boy named Martin who lived in Jerusalem at the time of our Lord. Martin went to school during the day and after school in the afternoon. Do you know, do you know what he did? He had a job working for a man who owned a big house in Jerusalem. Martin used to answer the front door and help wait on the table and help wash the dishes after supper was over. Martin was a very good worker and never broke any dishes. And his employer was fond of him. One Thursday evening, there was much excitement in the house where Martin worked. It seemed there were a number of friends of Martin's master were coming to dinner that evening. But these are not just ordinary friends. These are very special friends. Do you know who was coming to dinner that night? Why, Jesus and his 12 apostles. Well, can you imagine the excitement that gripped Martin? He was supposed to wait on the table, and believe me, he was nervous. He had heard a lot about Jesus, how he was the Son of God, how he'd come to save us from our sins, how he'd work so many wonderful miracles how holy and how kind he was. But Martin had never met Jesus before. Now imagine he was to have the wonderful privilege of waiting on our Lord at the supper time. At last, Jesus and his 12 apostles arrived and went upstairs to the dining room. After a prayer, they sat down at the table and began their supper. Martin could not take his eyes away from the face of Jesus. It was kind, loving, gentle, yet a strong face. And Martin thought that he had never seen anyone so wonderful before in all his life. Then Martin looked around at the 12 apostles. He saw Peter and Andrew and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew and Thomas and Matthew and the other James, Thaddeus and Simon. And last of all, man, he didn't like it all. Judas Iscariot, who was to betray our Lord. This was to be our Lord's last supper, supper before he died on the cross. But of course, no one in the room knew that except Jesus himself. And Judas was about to turn him over to his enemies. The meal was nearly over and Jesus rose from his place at the table. Martin watched him breathlessly, for he felt something tremendous was about to happen. Quietly and slowly, our Lord took bread into his sacred hands, blessed it, and said, This is my body. And then Jesus took a cup filled with wine and said over it, this is my blood, etc., which shall be shed for many unto the remission of sins. And then he gave to the apostles the consecrated bread to eat, and the consecrated wine to drink, and gave them the power to do what he had done. Meanwhile, Martin had fallen to his knees he didn't know exactly why, but he felt that something sacred was taking place. 
It was the first Mass. Later on, he understood. He realized that he had been present at the first Mass when our Lord had given men the great gift of the Holy Eucharist for the first time. That was their first Holy Communion, the Apostles. Later on, when he became a Catholic, Martin attended many Masses and received Holy Communion many times. But he never forgot that Holy Thursday night, the night before our Lord died on the cross, when Jesus took bread into his hands and said, This is my body. Joseph and my dearly beloved in Christ, you attend Mass and receive our Lord in Holy Communion often, but you fully realize what's happening? Do you realize that at Mass, the bread and wine are changed into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ? Do you realize that when you receive the Holy Eucharist, you're receiving what looks like a piece of bread, which is really the living Jesus himself, body, blood, soul, and divinity, who comes to us under the appearance of bread so we may receive him into our very bodies and souls. Yes, Joseph and my dearly beloved in Christ, remember that in the Holy Eucharist you're not receiving bread, but the living Christ who comes to you under the appearance of the sacred host so that he can be come to you as closely as possible. As possible as it can be. That's how much Jesus loved you. How much do you love him? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.